Bradley Cooper gets brutally honest about parenthood. Kate Middleton's reps brush off conspiracy theories. And did we just learn a new wrinkle in the Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift dating timeline? Hi, welcome back to A Quick Look, a pop culture show updating you through the biggest headlines, entertainment, and current events. I'm Zoe Jewell, and let's just get right into today's show. So, a lot to go over, a lot to discuss. First thing is first, Bradley Cooper's appearance on Armchair Expert has completely and totally rocked people's worlds in the last handful of days, and a lot of people have a lot of feelings about what Bradley said on this podcast, specifically about parenting. So there's a quote that he gave about essentially how the first few months of his daughter's life, he didn't feel as connected to her as he thought he would be or as people told him that he'd be. This is, I'm going to read what he said, and then we can dive into it a little bit more. So this is what he said. The first eight months, I don't even know if I really love the kid. It's dope. It's cool. I'm watching this thing morph. That's my experience. Fascinated by it. Loved taking care of it. But would I die if someone came in with a gun? <laughs> okay, so that was the quote that people were pulling and sharing on social media, Twitter, etc. Basically being like, did this guy just really admit that he didn't love his child for the first few months of her life well he then went on to say and then all of a sudden it's like no question now i actually listened to this podcast episode and i think this is a problem we see very often just since with the social media culture in general and celebrity culture right right now especially because so many more celebrities are doing more long form interviews or like talking to people for an hour an hour and a half there's and, and, when, and when quotes get pulled, they're often getting pulled out of context and you're not actually understanding the like, the way that it was brought up and also the tone and the way that the person is saying these things, that definitely affects how things come across. Anyway, I listened to this episode and I have to say that when you read the quote just as is, it sounds kind of ridiculous and weird, but in context and in, in the episode, it actually was a pretty... I felt like it was it was actually a very honest and very truthful moment. And I, and I don't want to say the word brave because I don't think it was brave, but I do feel like there are a lot of parents out there, especially a lot of fathers, who do struggle to connect with their child for the first few months of their life because they didn't carry the child. They don't understand they, they didn't have that person inside of them for 9 months. And so then when the child is born, it just takes probably a bit longer to actually fully connect and bond with the kid. And what Bradley was saying in the in the podcast was like, it, I took some time, but now of course I would die for my child and I love her so much. And I actually think he probably did some people a favor by, by being honest about it. Because I do think there are too many people that are not honest about parenthood and especially the like more taboo topics and difficult topics. Um, and I think there's probably a lot of people who relate to what Bradley was saying. They just would never say it out loud. Um, so I don't know. Again, out of context, seems like a crazy thing to say. But when you put it in context and actually listen to the episode and listen to what he was t was saying and, and was saying about parenthood and how much he loves being a father and loves being a dad and how much time he spends with his child, you would understand the full context a little bit better. So Anyway, thought it was interesting, thought it was kind of crazy how much social media took this quote and just ran with it. Um, but yeah, context is important, people. You, you have to know the, the full story before you go out and judge just a particular quote. I think that's important. Okay, moving on to the next story, a little bit more Kate Middleton news. Now, we talked about it earlier this week how... There's a lot of conspiracies floating around about what is going on with Kate Middleton. She has not been seen publicly since around Christmas time. She went in for a reportedly planned surgery for her, like a uh, planned abdominal surgery in late January. At the time, the palace reps said she wasn't going to be doing any of her public 
um, duties until after Easter. So all of this is sort of planned, the fact that she hasn't been seen in public. But yet people are wondering what's going on. There have there hasn't been a lot of details about what kind of surgery she did have, why she's not why she hasn't been seen in public in so long or what the reason is for her not being seen in public. And then the fact that the, er, earlier this week, Prince William canceled a public appearance due to a personal matter. It got the rumor mill swirling all over again. Well, this is what Kate Middleton's reps, the Kensington Palace, what they had to say this week. Kensington Palace made it clear in January the timelines of the princess's recovery and we'd only be providing significant updates that guidance stands. And then they went on to reiterate that she is, quote, doing well. So again, they're not giving a lot. They're really saying nothing at all. Um, but of course, I don't think this is going to stop the conspiracies from floating around, though it is, it, it is interesting that she hasn't been seen once, like not from a car or anything. It, it, it is a little bit curious. Um, Prince William, though, did resume his sort of public appearances this week. He actually attended um, some anti-Semitism events in London at a London synagogue on Thursday. So he's back out in front of people, talking to people. I don't know. I don't think any, even if Kate came out in public in like a few weeks, right? And revealed herself or returned to public duties after Easter, I still think people are going to question what has gone down in these last handful of months just because of the secrecy involved. So anyway, we'll see. Maybe more will come out in the coming days. All right, the final story of the day, another Travis Taylor story because why the hell not? We may have a new wrinkle or may have a bit more understanding of the of the early days of the Taylor and Travis romance. So. The Kansas City Chiefs defensive coach, Dave Merritt, was on a podcast this, this week, and he was asked, like every single Chiefs player and coach has been asked over the course of the last year, um, what it's been like for Travis to be dating Taylor Swift and for Taylor Swift to be involved with the team. And he revealed that when they first started dating, she would come around the facilities and it was privately. And he, he said, quote, she was coming into the stadiums without people really knowing until the camera put a big spotlight on it. Now, this made a lot of people, people were freaking out because they were like, wait, wait, does this mean that they have been dating for a lot longer than we know? Was she going around like training and stuff before they publicly started dating? What does this mean in terms of the timeline of the Taylor and Travis relationship? Because as we know it right now, they started dating in like maybe late August. Obviously their first public sort of appearance together was um, that game in September that she attended at Arrowhead. So this got people chattering. Now, I still think, I still think the timeline stands. They started dating in late August, started chatting in August, and then kind of, you know, went more public in September. But it is interesting to know how involved she's been with the team. We talked about it yesterday, how she made Pop-Tarts for the Chiefs offensive line. Um, and, and it's really cool to see how integrated she's become with this team and how much, like, yeah, not just Travis and his close friends on the team like her, but everyone, the coaching staff, everybody involved. Um, and honestly, I cannot wait for football season to start back up again because of football season, but also because... We can continue on with the Taylor Swift football collab, which has been probably the best collaboration in a very long time. All right, guys, that is it for today's show. As always, make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.